The other uh, extreme is materialism, and this is where we see wealth becoming, um, leading to pride and arrogance and uh, rejecting God. Deuteronomy 31.20 says, When I have brought them into the land flowing with milk and honey, the land I promised on in oath to their forefathers, and when they eat their fill and thrive, they will turn to other gods and worship them, rejecting me and breaking my covenant. Well, what leads to people rejecting him and breaking his covenant? Well, the very prosperity he gives them that results in them being able to eat their fill and thrive, when they get into that condition, then they start thinking they don't need God anymore. And when I say they, I mean we. <laughs> you know, in other words, yeah, that was they. But when we read Scripture, we need to see ourselves in it. <clears throat> Uh, Psalm 49, why should I fear when evil days come, when wicked deceivers surround me? Those who trust in their wealth and boast of their great riches. So, uh, the enemies of God, the wicked deceivers, by definition, are those who trust in their wealth and boast of their great riches. Materialism uh, is something that uh, is utterly incompatible with the Christian life of depending upon God as our provider, as our redeemer, as our savior, as the creator, as the owner of all things. Psalm 52, 7, here now is the man who did not make God his stronghold, but trusted in his great wealth and grew strong by destroying others. Hosea 13, But I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. You shall acknowledge no God but me, no Savior except me. I cared for you in the desert, in the land of burning heat. When I fed them, they were satisfied. When they were satisfied, they became proud. Then they forgot me. This is the built-in, one of the great paradoxes of life is that God blesses and rewards His people, and then His people become satisfied with the gift instead of the giver. They don't look at God anymore. Why, why, why do you need to pray, give us this day our daily bread, when you already know exactly where the daily bread's coming from? You know, you've got loaves and loaves of it frozen in your freezer, and whatever you don't have there, you can... Just go to the market right down the road and bread isn't that expensive and it's, you know right where you can get it and you got plenty of money to buy it and so why would you pray give us this day our daily bread when you already know you have it and you know where it's going to come from. Um, so I'm not glorifying having a lack of something. I'm just saying the temptation when God richly provides, which he has, for us in uh, unprecedented affluence actually in, in human history, the Western world today. You know, I say to people, um, look, and I would jot this down, uh, globalrichlist.com. Go to globalrichlist.com, uh, not right now, but sometime, and enter in your um, annual income or the value of your assets. There's different ways you can do this. And then it will tell you where you rank among the world's wealthy. And you will be shocked, and you'll even be shocked if you made minimum wage. You would be shocked if you were, the last time I looked, whatever U.S. poverty level was, uh, and it depends on you know how many dependents you have, but it, it's in the low, 20, low to mid 20,000s, depending on how many children you have, and I put in that figure, last I put it in, it was the 98 point something percent of the world's wealthy you fell in if you were in U.S. poverty level. If you make what, uh, and I forget where the cutoff is, it's like if you make 30, 30 some thousand dollars a year, which a lot of people would not consider very much money, you end up being in the 99.1%, so you're in the 99th percentile of the world's wealthy. Now think about that. You're in the same percentile that Bill Gates and Warren Buffett are in. 
they are just at the 99.999 percentile but you're in the 99th percentile you're just in the lower 99th percentile and if you make considerably more than that and many of us do then you are wealthy in the extreme but even the 99.1 percent that's wealthy in the extreme and so whenever we see wealth talked about in scripture this is another thing that we as americans tend to do because we know of so many people that are wealthier than we are we think when it's talking about rich people it's not talking about us but it is it is talking about all of us if you say it, well he's a person who is in the 99th percentile of the rich uh, of wealth of people in the entire world would that make him rich well of course it would and virtually all of us are there even 98th percentile if somebody is at u.s poverty level you're still in the 98th percentile and it's like what how is this even possible but it is. That's simply the reality of it, and we take it for granted.